Today I want to narrate the stories of Dipavali or Diwali and the top 5 learnings I have from this festival. Diwali or Dipavali comes from the Sanskrit word Deepa means lamp and Avali is rose. So it is a festival of lights where people light rows of lamps everywhere. And also it is celebrated during the darkest time of the year, October November ish, when you have the nights are dark, winter is setting in and the humidity is low. and during the new moon day this is the time when we welcome lakshmi into our house for abundance lakshmi is very fickle minded she only stays at homes where people are sincere pure hard working and they're grateful and we need to have these qualities all through the year if she has to stay in our house otherwise we have seen lakshmi comes into houses and she goes away in one or two generations because people change their attitude or their approach and it's also not just about the lamp we put outside it's also about cleaning our body and mind so we can light the lamp of consciousness within us another practice is to burst firecrackers It is not just bursting crackers outside it is also the time we burst all the negativities anger stress cravings we have inside us it's a time where we clean our mind so we can welcome the real abundance we also light this lamp of yamadeepa as they call it which is the light which runs all through the night this to remove fear of death one day we all have to die but it is to pray that we have a timely death when the time is right so we don't die at the wrong time it is that is what amadeepa is here to protect us so the stories are there are like three main stories which i want to narrate and then come to my top 5 takeaways from this festival so stay tuned in The stories are one is of Dhanavantri the god of ayurveda the second is about narka chaturdashi and the third is about bali padmi I want to narrate these three stories and bring in the top 5 takeaways This festival always comes in Kartika masa on the 13th day of trayodashi Traditionally the science behind this everybody worshiped Dhanavantri the de- the deity who is dedicated to health but somewhere it became wealth as well the one of the things which is nice to see and observe is the difference between the northern india and the southern india is the way the syllable is pronounced differently in south we call rama in north it becomes ram in south we say shiva it becomes shiv dhyana lingam we say and they call it as dhyana lingam or dhyanaling and dipavali has become diwali so they take away that syllable and it's pronounced differently so the one of the interpretations i can come out with or what i've heard people come out with this dhanavantri and trayodashi it is cut short and you made it as dhanteras and has become from health to wealth story of dhanavantri why we celebrate dhanavantri during diwali There is an ancient legend and a very interesting story about a 16-year-old son of King Hema. His horoscope predicted his death by a snake bite on the fourth day of his marriage. On that particular day, his newly wed wife did not allow him to sleep. In today's generation, maybe the wife will allow him to sleep so that he dies, but as per this ancient legend she did not allow him to sleep she laid out all her ornaments and many gold and silver coins in a heap at the entrance of the sleeping chamber and lit many lamps then she narrated stories and songs to keep her husband from falling asleep 
The next day when Yama the god of death arrived at the prince's doorstep in the guise of a serpent his eyes were dazzled and blinded by the brilliance of the lamps and the jewelry Yama could not enter the prince's chamber so he climbed on top of the heap of gold coins and sat there the entire night listening to the stories and songs in the morning he silently went away thus the young princess was saved from the clutches of the death of yama by the cleverness of how she did this so this is how we celebrate dantheras so we can buy gold coins during this festival and keep it to protect us from death so this is one version of the story the other version of the story is samudra mantan There is a popular story associated with Dantheras festival and this is a version I believe in as well and as per this story during samudra mantan or the amrit mantan as the way they call it dhanavantri who is the god of health she was churning the milky ocean which resulted in unearthing many precious gems valuables and most importantly amrit which is a potent liquid when you drink it you become immortal and this churning took place between the gods and the asuras this churning was done to get amrit from the milky ocean and this nectar was prepared by dhanavantri who is the physician of the gods and she is a manifestation of vishnu and it is one of the famous legends to say that is how Dantheras came into existence where Dhanavantri milked through this ocean and she got Amrit. The next story is of Narka Chaturdashi. This is about how Narkasura is killed by Satyabhama and Krishna and we celebrate this day as a part of Diwali. Narkasura will be a very fierce demon. and he'll have a boon that only his mother the bu devi could kill him and satyabama who is born and will be who will be the wife of krishna is born to kill this demon narkasura and after narkasura is killed krishna frees the 16000 women whom narkasura would have imprisoned and he frees them and they have a bath using the blood of narkasura and at that time he also marries all of these 16000 women to signify that they are free from this demon and then we go on to the story of bali padmi which is a very interesting story king bali will be a very powerful demon and he was the most famous king and there was peace and prosperity in his kingdom but he became very powerful and the entire world was under his control he even attacked indra and pushed him out and occupied indraloka bali wanted to have the seat of indra permanently and as per his guru shukracharya's advice he was performing ashwamedha yagna so he had told him if he completes the 100th ashwamedha yagna then he'll be eligible for the post of indra and bali would have completed 99 and he'll be prepared to doing the 100th ashwamedha yagna indra goes to lord vishnu and asks him for help lord vishnu assures him and he is then born as a child as vamana and he grows up very fast but remember vamana is a dwarf and but he is an incarnation of vishnu and when bali was performing the 100th ashwamedha yagna vamana comes to his yagna as a brahman and king bali came to Vam- vamana and he did a sashtanga namaskara and prayed to him to ask what is the dhana or a gift he wants from him he also told him that whatever vamana demands he will give that to him and at this time vamana tells him i don't want any of your gold or your precious metals but just give me 
three steps of the land. I'm going to put my three steps. Please give me that land as your gift. Bali agrees to this, saying that how much can this dwarf take? And three steps is nothing for me. By that time, King Bali's guru, Shukracharya, realized that the little Brahmin is Vishnu. He told Bali not to give the dana, as the gods had sent Vishnu to take away everything he had. Bali refused to hear his advice and said, "What more glory can I get than fulfilling the dana dharma demanded by demanded of Sri Vishnu?" An angry Shukracharya cursed him to lose everything, and he went away from that place. Soon, the short rupa of Vamana grew in size, so huge that it is impossible to describe in words. To be called as Trivikrama Rupa, with his first step, Vamana, Vamana covered all of the earth. His second step covered all of the sky. There was a place for the third step. There was no place for the third step, and King Bali offered his head, and Vamana sent Bali to Patal Loka or the underworld. He was also given the boon that he will be allowed to rule the entire universe for one day in a year, and on that day he can visit the earth, which is the Bali Padmi day, the day of the last day of after. Diwali. Here are the top five takeaways I have. Why we celebrate Diwali? The first one is why do we light lamps? Is it to show light to people who are away? Our ancients realized the biggest killer were the insect-borne diseases, and they would come during winter months when we had low humidity. To protect us, they found a very simple solution. That was by lighting lamps to the, during this period, and this what this did. It not just killed the insects, but it kept our surroundings alive, which was much needed during the winter months, as we have a tendency of falling sick or getting depressed. All of that will go away when you're surrounded by light and your entire atmosphere is lively and active. The second is, why do we make rangolis? And the beauty of rangolis is, it has got a corresponding harmonic to every frequency. There are twenty-eight patterns in which you can draw the rangolis. We have one for a new moon day, one for a, a full moon day, one for a half moon day. Each of them attracted a different energy into our house, and that is what our ancients depicted as: when you draw the right pattern of rangoli on that day. You attract the right energy into your house, and the third for me is why do we eat so much food during Diwali? And ghee is is there in most of the foods we consume, and also it is important to know here as ghee is a natural catalyst, and it provides natural fatty acids to our body, and we are mostly brainwashed by these oil companies that ghee is. Unhealthy for us, but actually, a spoonful of ghee poses no danger to our heart, and it also protects you from cancer. And it's and it's also sold in the Western market as clarified butter. And our body during winter months need more calories, and pure ghee not only gives you the body that warmth, but also gives you that extra energy which is needed. The fourth one is. What is the significance of story of Dhanavantri? We celebrate the god of health and Lakshmi, the god of wealth, by the woman of the house, and also killing of the Narakasura and Rama killing Ravana and Pandavas returning back into Hastinapur, the Sikh Guru getting freed from the Mughals. All of this wanted to teach us at the end. Good wins over evil. It may take time, but if you keep at it, you will ultimately win. A great man once said, "Our ancestors thought everything through the stories. They wanted to depict through these stories. Good will ultimately win. You should not have any doubt about it. 
if you are pure in your heart for love or happiness and you pray for it you will get it there is no second question about it the fifth takeaway i have is diwali connects you with nature as some people say bursting fire firecrackers you break with nature it is not true the way our festivals are designed it is meant to connect you with nature and celebrate the seasonal changes diwali celebrates welcoming the winter month it celebrates good over evil light over darkness knowledge over ignorance and if we are ignorant of our own culture how can we respect earn respect from others we need to be proud of our roots and where we come from and let's light that small lamp in our corner and make 1% of the world brighter if all of us could do that then the world entire world would be a much brighter place to live in we want to make this 1% of the world brighter by telling these stories at mishti i hope you like them please like subscribe and spread the word of this channel so we can tell more of these ancient stories